for uh, our Bible study today. We're uh, continuing in our study of angels, and the title of today's lesson is Guarded by Angels. We'll be looking at the scripture of Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 17. And uh, we want to take a look at what the Bible teaches about the protective care of angels uh, in, in our own lives. But before we begin our study, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your word and all that you teach us about yourself and uh, about your great love for us and how you care for us. And Father, we're thankful for all of your blessings to us and we're most thankful that our savior jesus christ your son died on the cross so that we could spend an eternity in heaven with you and father we will be forever throughout eternity grateful for that blessing so we thank you and pray in jesus name amen you know i wouldn't be surprised if you and i uh, have not brushed shoulders or uh, had interactions with angels in our lifetime because I'm going to turn over to Hebrews chapter 13 and uh, just read verse number 2 to you. Hebrews 13 2 says, Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. What's that saying to us? Is that saying every stranger we meet, we're supposed to bring them into our home? I'll kind of address that at the end of the lesson, but no, that would not be wise and, uh, and not something that we would want to uh, do because it just isn't safe. So, but, so what does it mean? Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. You know, I think it's telling us just be kind to people. I think kindness is something that uh, we uh, are lacking. And, uh, and, you know, as Christians, we should not be lacking in kindness because the Lord instructs us to be kind to people, not just the people that we know, but to just be kind to all people. And he tells us to be kind because our God is kind. And we serve a kind God, full of kindness toward us. And as he is full of kindness toward us, that kindness should flow out of us to uh, people that we come in contact with. So let me just encourage you, and, and especially if you're a Christian and, and we... Um, represent the Lord in uh, the people that we come in contact with because we've taken on his name and, and we're his children. So we need to show his kindness. So, and I think that's what it's telling us here because sometimes uh, we will entertain angels without even realizing it. Wouldn't you hate to go home and think you'd been cranky to an angel? So we just need to be kind to people that we come in contact with. So uh, our scripture for today, hi Cassie, our scripture for today is in Acts 12. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 17. So if we let's uh, get started. These things that happened in chapter 12 of Acts took place about 10 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. So that's the time frame that we're in. Jesus uh, had died on the cross about 10 years uh, before these scriptures took place. And it says about that time, King Herod Agrippa. He, King Herod Agrippa is the grandson of Herod the Great, and Herod the Great is the one who tried to kill uh, Jesus when he was an infant. So this is his grandson. Uh, he began to persecute some believers in the church. So still at it. And verse number two said, he had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. Now, when we, uh, this is James, John's brother, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus also has a half brother named James. This is not Jesus's half brother, but this is John's uh, brother. And 
we'll need that clarified for a verse that we're going to read later. So, but he, anyway, he had him killed with a sword. But listen to this in verse 3. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders were pleased. It pleased them when uh, the king had uh, one of the apostles murdered, killed with a sword. And it said that when he saw how much it pleased the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, he, he thought, well, if that pleased them, I'll just do them another good turn. He arrested Peter during the Passover celebration and imprisoned him. So he's killed James. That made the religious leaders happy. So he said, okay, I'll just arrest Peter. But he did it during the uh, seven days of unleavened bread of the Passover. And he knew that wouldn't please the Jews if he uh, had his trial during that time. So he's just going to keep him in prison until the, uh, pass, uh, the Passover celebration is over. He said, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. So this means that 16 guards. It was their job, probably six hour, uh, four guards serving six hour um, at, at a time. But what they would do, is that, because they did this to uh, Paul as well, they would put a guard on his right and a guard on his left and handcuff him or tie him to both of those guards. He couldn't even scratch his nose without bringing a guard's uh, hand up to his face with him, and then they would place two more guards outside uh, or at the door. So all of the t all the time, there were four four guards guarding one man, Peter. But if you read back, I believe it's in chapter five. They had had Peter in jail before, and an angel miraculously got him out. So. Uh, Herod's not wanting anything like that to happen again, so he's being super careful. And uh, so he has 16 soldiers, uh, four at a time, probably guarding uh, Peter around the clock. Herod's intention was to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But verse 5 says, while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. You know, Peter was bound, but prayer was loosed. And the church was uh, meeting in the, the home of Mary, and the church was praying honest, earnestly for uh, Peter while he was uh, in jail. Verse number six. This gets so interesting. I know you're going to enjoy it. it. says, the night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep. Here he is, a guard on either side of him, and he just trusts the Lord, and he is just sleeping away. Uh, what would cause Peter when he's looking at a trial, and believe me, that trial was not going to go well for him, and he knew it. But he just went right off to sleep because he trusted the Lord. And, you know, Jesus had told uh, Peter in John 21, 18, that Peter would live to an old age. So I'm thinking Peter thought, well, this isn't it. I'm not of an old age yet. Jesus said I was going to live till I was. So uh, he just went off to sleep, totally trusting the Lord, chained between two soldiers with others standing guard at the prison gate. Verse number seven of Acts 12. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. Not the angel of the Lord, but an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel tapped him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up. And the chains fell off of his wrist. He was chained each wrist to a soldier on the side of him, and Peter's chains came off supernaturally. Verse number eight, then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. I'm thinking Peter might have been a little bit groggy. I'll, it'll be a little bit clearer here in a little bit, but I think he was a sleepyhead when he uh, woke him up, so probably into 
to me, saying he was probably uh, in a deep sleep, a real uh, comfortable deep sleep. But the angel said, get dressed, put on your sandals. And he did. And he said, now put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. The angel had been sent by God with a message and a task that he was to do. So verse number nine says, so Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was really happening. In other words, he thought, I must be dreaming. Verse number 10, they passed the first and second guard post and came to the iron gate to the street, and this opened to them all by itself. Again, supernatural. That when he got to the gate, the angel didn't push it open. It just opened of its own accord. So they passed through and started walking down the street. Then the angel suddenly left him. You see, the angel had a mission, and he had completed it. He was to uh, tell Peter, get all your stuff because you're not coming back. Get dressed, get your coat, get your shoes. Follow me out of here. And uh, then after they got out on the street with Peter still thinking, this must be, uh, I must be dreaming. And then the, the angel suddenly left him because his mission was accomplished. He had done what the Lord had sent him to do. Verse 11 says, Peter finally realized what had happened. It's really true, he said to himself. The Lord sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jews were hoping to do to me. It, he just got it that it had really happened and that the Lord had sent the angel to help him and deliver him. And verse number 12, you can just imagine how he felt. Here he is in the middle of the street, middle of the night. And uh, so verse number 12 says, after a little thought, after collecting his thoughts, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where uh, many were gathered for prayer. This is the church meeting in Mary's home, uh, praying earnestly for Peter and the trial that they suspect that he will be facing the next day. And John Mark is the Mark who wrote the uh, book of Mark. Uh, the gospel of Mark. So 13, verse 13, he knocked at the door in the gate and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. She was so overjoyed. She was so happy. She was so excited that she didn't even open the door for Peter to come in. She just ran back uh, because of her joy and said, Peter is standing at the door. So here's the church gathered together, praying earnestly for Peter for the trial that he'll be facing the next day. And so they said, yay, God has answered our prayer. He's here. Is that what they said? No. Look at verse 15. You're out of your mind, they said. Don't you think that's kind of funny? You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. It couldn't be Peter, although they've been praying for him. But they, I don't think they stopped to consider that God would um, deliver him before the trial. I think they were probably praying for him to be delivered from the trial. And you know, sometimes we tell God what's the best way to answer our prayer. And then when God answers in a different way, we just have a hard time wrapping our mind around it. And I think that's what these people did. They just had a hard time wrapping their mind around it that Peter could possibly be there because they knew he was in jail because they were praying for him for what he would be going through the next day, not what he would be going through tonight. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. Remember me? Um, opened the door, and when they finally went out and opened the door, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them what had happened and how 
the Lord had led him out of jail. Did he say how the angel had led him out of jail? Was it an angel that led him out of jail? Yes, it was. Very plainly told us it was an angel. So it, uh, when it's Jesus, he's called the angel of the Lord. And um, this is an angel of the Lord. So it's a messenger that God had sent. But do you see what Peter did? He gave glory to God. He knew it was an angel that had delivered him, brought him out, but he knew that angel had been sent by God. And folks, that's the way we are. God gets all the glory. God gets all the things. So he said, uh, tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said, and then he went to another place. Now, when he said, tell James, remember over in verse 1 where uh, James, where James had been um, killed, murdered. That, like I said, was John's brother, James, but this James is the half-brother of Jesus. Why is he a half-brother? They had different fathers. Mary was the mother of both of them, but Joseph was James' father, and God was Jesus' father. So it made uh, them half-brothers. And, you know, when they were living, James had a really difficult time uh, believing that his brother was the Messiah. He st all of his sub uh, siblings, they, they struggled with that. But after the resurrection, James became a, a, just a, a on-fire believer, uh, in who Jesus really was, and he became the leader of the uh, church at Jerusalem. So that's who uh, Peter is instructing them to go to. So God uses his holy angels to deliver us out of situations, and and I think uh, it appears that Peter was able to see his angel. And you know what? Maybe you and I can see, not be able to see them, but that does not mean that God has not sent them to work on our behalf. But the praise and the honor and the glory go to the God who sent his messenger, not to the messenger. Even the messengers tell us that. So, um, you know, we're in a time of, uh, of this uh, pandemic, and I wanted to share a scripture with you uh, in Psalm. I'm just ready for it to be over, aren't you? I want to share a scripture in closing over in Psalm uh, 91. Psalm 91, I'm going to start with verse 9 and read through 13. And, and I come on, ran on to this scripture because I'm studying scriptures about angels. So this was interesting to me. And I also thought it was applicable to the time that we're living in. Verse number nine says, If you make the Lord your refuge, and if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your dwelling. For he orders his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you with their hands to keep you from striking your foot on a stone. You will trample down lions, poisonous snakes, and you will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Beautiful scripture. But, I mean, it's beautiful scripture, there's no but there. It's just beautiful scripture. But this is the scripture that Satan used to tempt Jesus over in Matthew uh, uh, chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. So here in Psalm, this promise is made to those who make the Lord uh, their refuge and the Most High their shelter. And uh, so, like I said, Satan tried to use this verse to tempt Jesus to jump off of the highest point of the temple. Let's turn over to Matthew, 5, uh, Matthew 4 and look at verses 5 through 7. 
Then the devil took him to Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, in Psalm 91, He orders his angels to protect you, and they will hold you with their hand to keep you from striking your foot on a stone. So Satan is saying to Jesus when he tempted him, don't you believe the scriptures? That's what it says in Psalm 91. Do you not believe that? Then jump off of this building. And uh, God won't allow, uh, his, his, he'll have his angels hold you up and uh, you'll not strike your foot on a stone. That's what the scriptures say. But look at Jesus' response in verse 7. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, do not test the Lord your God. That's in Deuteronomy 6.16. So Jesus' response was that we are foolish if we presume upon God's protection just because the devil dares us. The devil dared Jesus to rely on that scripture. And our Lord said, it is also written, do not test the Lord your God. So folks, I hope that you'll just be safe and, uh, and make it as safe as you can for the ones around you. I just want to get through this. I'm, I'm tired of the pandemic. I'm tired of COVID, and I know you are too. And if we can just be as safe as we can be, and make it as safe for others as we can make it and get through this. And, and you know, and I, I know that I've heard people say that, yeah, after the American election is over, COVID's going to go away. And you know what? I hope it does. Because that would mean just in a couple of months, it'll be over and we can get back to uh, whatever our new normal is going to be. But you know what? God is our protector. He does take care of us, and he does send his angels to care for us. But Jesus himself of the scripture in Psalm 91 said, don't tempt the Lord your God. Jesus said, I'm not, gonna, I'm not jumping off of this building just to prove to you that I believe God. So you and I can believe God, but we don't need to be jumping off of any buildings to prove it to Satan. He he tests. Don't you believe the word of God? If you do, then uh, God's going to protect you no matter what you do. So my friend, let's just praise the Lord our God and let's just Lift him up. And, you know, one of these days, my friend, one of these days, and I think it could be very soon, Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for a people who have believed that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, have accepted him as their Savior. And he's coming back to take us to our heavenly home. Oh, my friend, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, let me encourage you that now is the time. Today, right now, don't put it off. Because sometimes we can put things off until it's too late. So don't put it off. There is nothing in this world more important than your relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus died on that cross, was buried, and he rose again so that the blood he shed on that cross could take away our sins so that we could go to heaven. So believe that in your heart. Ask Jesus into your heart. And my friend, one of these days, one of these days, we will put our feet down on streets of gold. And we'll see the Savior who died for us, who made it all possible. We have a very positive 
and bright future. So remember when we pray to not just expect the answers to come like we're expecting them, but that we might see God's answers in whatever way he answers. Because like these people, they were praying earnestly. She said, he's at the door. They said, you must be out of your mind. So see, and I think we can do that too. So my friends, Jesus is the answer to all of our problems. He's the answer to all of our questions. So let me just encourage you to trust him as your savior and make sure that you will one day be in heaven with Jesus and with your loved ones. You know, I, I have never been sorry for the decision that I made to follow Jesus, never. And you won't find very many Christians that are because even in this life, it's a better life to know the Lord and to trust him because he takes all the worry out of it for us. Aren't you glad? I think it's just exciting to be a Christian. I think it's just exciting to be God's child and to know that he is in control of everything. And I don't have to worry about anything and neither do you. We're his kids. As our father, he takes care of everything. And if he's taking care of everything, you and I don't have to worry. It's a good deal for us. I'm going to close with the chorus of, of this song and let it be my invitation to you that if you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, please do it today. Please. I need no mansions here below For Jesus said that I could go To a home beyond the clouds not made with hands won't you come and go along we will sing the sweetest song ever played upon the harps in glory land thank you <laughs>